Thanks, David. Um, let's get right to it. Uh, we saw already a couple of uh, seeming talks, so you have uh, a bit of an overview already of uh, what we have worked on the last months on. Um, now I will uh, go in a bit uh, the, uh, the classical the other way and uh, also bring in some uh, tips and tricks and opinions uh, from my side. So we are talking here about uh, classic UI, so not uh, Volto, not the uh, uh, fancy side, um, but uh, there's still a lot of uh, time going on until everybody will jump ship uh, to Volto. Uh, we have big installations out there, so we, we will need to uh, at least uh, maintain what we have out there. And there will be still new projects starting the old way um, because of uh, that's the only resources they have or the no only knowledge. So let's go into the details. Um, I will shortly, really shortly uh, um, go uh, give an overview of what Diazo is. Um, I think most of you might probably know it. So, um, we will not go into detail there. Um, building a custom uh, Plone 6, uh, Plone 6 seam uh, with Diazo, and uh, we will use the Plone CLI to create uh, uh, this kind of package. Plone seaming uh, in the classic UI, what we uh, use um, when we have, uh, um, or when we use Diazo, we have a HTML5 uh, theme, and we have a, a mapping configuration. And uh, this mapping configuration uh, maps our theme on the uh, with the plume uh, dynamic content. Uh, we also are able to uh, deploy this as a, a zip file um, and also uh, yeah, upload this in the plume theming editor. This will still be possible, even though we will uh, give up the um, online uh, compiling in the browser, uh, which never was really reliable. Uh, and because it also handled JavaScript, uh, it actually uh, made a lot of pain for a lot of uh, people. And uh, we will get rid of that. Uh, if you uh, use just plain CSS, you can even uh, change your CSS still with the seeming editor. Uh, this is just uh, how it looks now, and it will still look kind of the same in the in the future. There are some more options which we'll show later. Um, let's see how this works with the mapping. We are mapping dynamic clone content elements uh, into a static layout, so you can have your static layout. Either you get it uh, um, ready-made uh, layout from the internet or you get it from your designer of your choice, or you build it your, uh, yourself. Um, the easy way is now to go completely with Bootstrap. Um, on the right side, you have your plone. Uh, okay, this is an older version, but uh, the, the principle uh, didn't change. Um, and then you have the diazo, which brings all the things together. So you have your um, mock-up, uh, which is the static uh, uh, theme, then you have uh, your vanilla system, uh, which is the blown, and Diazo rules who uh, merge this all together to a final themed website. Here's one example. Uh, if you want to take over the main navigation, you could use a replace a statement, for example. You would uh, select uh, some parts from the content side, in this case, uh, navbar uh, minus nav. Um, and you would put it uh, on the seam side into uh, the uh, matching point. Um, the selectors can change. Uh, you can also use XPath, which sometimes uh, might be faster, not all the times. Uh, and it's usually more verbose and uh, harder to read. <clears throat> Separating front end and back end seam. Don't re reinvent uh, the back end views. Um, it's possible to see in the back end, but uh, most of the time, not really necessary. Um, the back end looks fine. It's functional. It also has advantages that it always looks uh, kind of the same um, because you can use uh, documentation and, and screenshots uh, 
and uh, you don't have to uh, redo this all the time for every customer project. Focus on the front end layout instead. The front end seam uh, part of the or the front end rules uh, you have here as an overview. What you can see here is uh, we have a main wrapper which has a, a condition a body view permission view and a body view permission none. Um, if these classes are in the body tag, then uh, we are talking about what we call front end, which is basically all the visible parts, no matter if you are uh, um, locked in or not. And uh, uh, you can um, you can uh, when you are locked in, you still have this uh, this part. Uh, so everything is styled, locked in, not locked in, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, here you have all your standard uh, rules, uh, you know, from, from the past years, or if you're coming new to clone seeming, that's all uh, documented and uh, you can go that way. The other side is uh, Bassoneta itself uh, provides a backend uh, XML. Um, you can use this backend XML like this. Uh, so you have somewhere in your rules file, uh, you have the inverted uh, uh, selector of the body view permission view. So uh, whenever you don't have these classes on the body tag, then uh, the backend uh, Bassonita XML uh, gets loaded. And this will uh, basically uh, remove some stuff from your seam. So you only have the, the, the toolbar and the main uh, content area and uh, the control panels and all, and they look like they look in standard clone. Uh, so you don't have to uh, care about that. Some best practices. You map your uh, content uh, into, um, into the seam with Diazo, but Diazo is not for everything. If your markup, uh, if you have a need for a special markup and the backend is not producing this markup, don't try this to uh, solve this with, uh, with Diazo or XSL. You can do that. It can be handy sometimes, but that's the should not be the main way to go. It makes your seam uh, way more complex, uh, as you will see uh, uh, some slides further. Um, and it's it's really hard to understand, and it takes uh, sometimes a lot of time, and you f actually find in a system. The solution is fix the the backend templates directly. So just override the templates uh, either with JBoard or uh, if you know other ways like with uh, SysML or whatever, uh, you can, there are many ways to do that, but the, the simplest way is uh, just with uh, JBoard. Um, and uh, here you have an example, if you have a uh, add-on like clone app layout and you have a viewlets module there and there is a logo uh, PT, you want to override it, uh, put in your overrides uh, folder, just uh, the full dotted name path, uh, like you see on the right side, and uh, this file will overwrite the original file. And you can just copy the original file and make the changes you want. This is actually how we started with, uh, with all the template changes in uh, Clone Scene Bassoneta. <coughs> yeah, uh, you can also use uh, uh, seam fragments, so collective uh, seam fragments is uh, really handy. Uh, you can also add browser views, just uh, clone CLI add view, and you have your browser view uh, with a template if you want. So for new templates, this is the way to go. Um, either browser view or for quick and dirty, you can use the seam fragments. Let's have a look uh, how the seam fragments uh, work. We have here, uh, a fragments folder. So this is uh, this is our seam folder, and uh, in the folder uh, we have subfolder fragments. And if you put uh, uh, a template here, like this, this is just a bunch of uh, um, tal. Uh, so mainly HTML. You can also have just HTML, but you can also use uh, every uh, thing you know from uh, so page templates. So um, the syntax uh, is the same. Um, 
So you can basically have uh, quick and dirty just templates. Sometimes you just want uh, some icons, some HTML stuff. And if you do it for for just the site, and it will never change because some of the elements, of, especially on the on the uh, start page, they will usually not change or not uh, not that often. So you can just do your static HTML here, and uh, you can uh, inject it in your theme, um, and just leave it as that. Uh, but you can also do uh, something uh, more dynamic. So uh, here you see we are actually filling in uh, some some variables, and I can show you how this is done. Um, we have here also uh, helper uh, uh, classes. Uh, so we have here this is um, script Python. Um, so you can. You can have some some methods uh, which which helps to keep your <clears throat> your page templates clean. They all have the same name, so these three files, uh, the PT, the PY, and the XML, they all belong together. If you wonder what the XML might uh, do, let me show that. Um, this might look familiar, um, so. This is a super a super model, so the same what you get when you when you create a new content type in the dexterity control panel. Uh, you can also use uh, VS, the VS Code extension uh, to have to just create this uh, this uh, snippets. Um, and what you are what we're doing here, uh, we actually using a choice. Uh, Choice field with a relation widget. So this is basically the same you see in the related items uh, widget. Um, this we're using to to uh, select an image from from the website. Then we have some other fields uh, where we say uh, we have some the scales uh, uh, you can select for the image uh, to use. Uh, we want to set the height uh, for the for the cover. We have some text fields, so we have some um, title and subtitle. We have a, a call to action, a link text, and also we have a link target, which is uh, again a related, it related items uh, widget, um, which points uh, or lets the user point to some content in the website. So in the website itself, uh, this is the the template we are using. So this is just from Start Bootstrap uh, uh, Bootstrap theme. Uh, we're using it a bit different. Uh, I don't like this uh, one page scrollers. And where's the point in having a one page website when you have a CMS uh, uh, just to edit one side? It might be uh, um, a solution for for some people. Um, and from for some websites, but I think clone is probably not the right uh, choice then. Let's see this. We have here a bit of a mix. So we have uh, similar elements. Um, this is actually just static and uh, this is uh, dynamic. So what we're using on the front page is uh, mosaic. Um, this looks a bit, uh, has a bit Two big margins here. That's the the uh, newer version needs a bit uh, fine tuning. But what we have here, we inserted uh, a seam fragment, and then you get a list, and you can place it like every other um, uh, every other mosaic tile. And all the fragments you have, they're automatically uh, visible to to mosaic. And here we see this is the the cover fragment. Uh, here we already selected uh, background image. Um, and here we have all our our fields. And this is just a static uh, fragment. So uh, this is, yeah, I cannot edit here. Uh, here we only have the, I can insert some other uh, fragments I already added, but uh, other than that, it's it's the same. So, what the, the fragment does is the the, uh, the template um, uses the Python functions and the um, the data uh, injected uh, with the supermodel, and you can uh, create um, yeah uh, tiles uh, uh, or fragments which you can configure. There are limitations. You cannot have file upload right now, I think, and uh, TinyMC doesn't work. So more the simple fields they are working. Um, 
if you need more, you better create a new um, mosaic tile as a package and uh, use that. Okay, let's go on. Um, one thing I I like, uh, not everybody likes this, but uh, um, it's a bit half-half uh, mix uh, um, with people who, who are handling design. Um, I like using Zax uh, mixins. Uh, let me show you what I mean. If you have markup like this, this has already a main wrapper, which gives you a hint what this is and it has a name so I can address it. I can put style sheets on it. Um, it has also a content column uh, and then it has extra um, extra style sheet uh, classes, uh, which you might know uh, they are uh, coming from, from Bootstrap. Um, if you look at this uh, example, this is way cleaner. The problem what you have here is uh, um, this is this can get really messy. Uh, I mean, this is just these are just some settings. You can have uh, easily uh, a bunch of more uh, um, configuration classes for Bootstrap there, and uh, um, usually uh, or often you see uh, you see a lot of markup which actually has only these classes and not even uh, meaning meaningful uh, things like the main wrapper or the content column. So. After all, you have not even a chance uh, to easily style it from, from the outside. Um, this is clean and you can uh, define your columns and uh, container and whatever settings you have. Uh, you can do that with uh, SCSS and, or, or SAS, um, basically the same. Um, this is a, an example how to use uh, um, mixins. Uh, pretty much everything Bootstrap uses uh, you can also use uh, with mixins. Uh, it looks like a, a, bit, a little bit like this. Uh, the, the first thing they do is uh, um, uh, initialization of the, of the column. And then you, you can have uh, uh, different settings for different breakpoints, for example. Uh, this is basically the equivalent to, uh, to cal minus sm minus four and uh, for the larger screen, this is uh, Carl minus LG minus eight. The big advantage is this is style sheet. So I can change this in style sheet without having the need to override templates. So uh, if you want to go more into detail how Diazo works, the rules, uh, all the, the mappings and all, um, just uh, have a look at uh, the Diazo documentation and also clone, uh, the docs clone.org um, have a bunch of uh, infos there. Let's have a look on the new part um, on the upcoming stuff. As uh, my colleagues already mentioned, uh, we now have uh, from the backend coming bootstrap standard uh, markup, which makes it way easier uh, to integrate. If you start with Bootstrap uh, from, from scratch now, uh, with a Diazo theme, uh, the, the integration is uh, pretty simple. The, the most headaches I have actually in uh, matching the, the ideas of a designer who wasn't thinking about uh, what things are uh, in, in blown and doable and mapping that on, uh, on, on the CMS itself. Um, but this you will always have. So you also have the custom CSS uh, in the semi control panel. Um, uh, if you want to, to uh, try this out, it's actually sneaked already in uh, 5.2.2. Uh, uh, so uh, from 5.2.2, you can actually find it in the advanced uh, tab in the seeming control panel. And this is basically the last part of CSS, which is loaded after Diazo and after every bundle. Um, so whatever CSS you write there, it's like the old custom CSS, you can just override CSS. And as soon as we have all the uh, options in uh, redefining uh, CSS variables, so uh, you can do that there too. Um, that's a quick and dirty way 
um, but it's also an easy way. And uh, sometimes you just want to stick with the normal uh, plone design and uh, you just need to change some colors and some stuff. And for that, it's a really easy way. You don't need to create a seam at all. What we also have is we have uh, simplified uh, diazo roads. Um, if you look at this, um, it doesn't even fit uh, in this. This is the, the standard uh, or was the standard uh, until now uh, in Plone 5 in the Bassoneta. Uh, and that might be not a problem uh, if you uh, if you think uh, I will I create my own, my own seam and I do it uh, a different way, but uh, it will bite you uh, still because uh, this is also used in the in the backend part. So if you don't want to create everything uh, for yourself, uh, then uh, you have to handle with this. And this, because this uh, is uh, basically uh, placing the whole content area with all the columns and everything. Uh, it's really hard to to customize or or get uh, smaller pieces, um, uh, which you normally can. Um, what uh, what we did instead is uh, we refactured uh, that. Uh, the, the main reason to, to do uh, all this uh, is to set uh, bootstrap related classes. Uh, you see, uh, we are making quite a fuss here uh, just to uh, set these style sheet classes. Um, if it would for me, uh, I would probably go complete with mixins, but uh, um, uh, Right now, we are keeping uh, the, the, the existing approach. And uh, uh, I moved all the stuff uh, as, uh, and you, you have this as an X, uh, XI include. So you don't see it. And you can now just uh, import your, um, your uh, theme uh, or your content into the theme uh, like the normal uh, the other way. Uh, this is how I did it in Plone 4 uh, or similar. And uh, this is working uh, now again. And you can also decide to not grab this thing, but grab the, 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 in, the inner pieces in, in separate steps so that you have more control. That's up to you. Uh, but it's plain uh, diazo. So let's have a quick look on the Plone CLI. We are basically using Plone CLI uh, to uh, create a Plone package, a Plone add-on. And uh, after creating the Plone add-on, we uh, go into the created package and then we add a Plone uh, theme. Uh, the themes are right now not updated. So uh, after I did that, I had to change the structures. They are not ready for Plone 6 now, um, but they will uh, involve in time. So you can just answer some questions. Uh, most of them uh, have same defaults. You can even override the defaults. Uh, just if you never tried Plone CLI, uh, try it. Uh, it. It helps a lot. So we also have the Plone theme Basoneta, which will be also updated in time. And uh, this is basically what uh, Peter was showing. So um, this is the basic structure. What you get, it's pretty pretty simple and pretty clean. Uh, when you uh, start Plone now, you just uh, just see an unstyled theme, uh, which uh, pulls in all the content so that you can inspect it. And then you uh, put your, um, uh, then you put your, your uh, content in there. You can copy it. Or better, if possible, like with this one, you can just uh, insert it with npm or yarn, and uh, you can yeah, just uh, import the style, the styles or the ZAS files from from the uh, node modules folder, which makes it easier. This looks, uh, this is how it looks uh, when it's done, and. Uh, yeah. I will pu uh, publish the, the theme um, when it's ready. Uh, for uh, yeah, for you to inspect and have an an example uh, as soon as possible. And right now uh, this is empty, but uh, this will come 
as soon as it's uh, does any does any sense uh, make sense for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm open for questioning. Great, thanks, thanks, uh, Mike. I have two questions. They are my questions. So if you want your question to go in, uh, add it to Slido. Otherwise, I'm going to ask these two questions. All right, so I'll go ahead with the questions that I have. I, I noticed in one of your examples, you were using Mosaic. Uh, one of the challenges I've had with Mosaic in the past is that it didn't have an undo or a history. Is that still the case? Yeah, Mosaic is uh, is not like refractured completely. Um, uh, Robert is working on that uh, together with uh, with Peter for for some projects, but there's not much uh, much work uh, going on. They were ma mainly working on the on the grid system and on on making it work with the newer Bootstrap versions, uh, so that uh, you and you also have some. Some new uh, extra uh, formatting options where you can uh, set something like uh, in the smaller screen I want uh, one column, in the bigger screen uh, I want two. So this this uh, this kind of uh, um, responsive settings uh, you can set with some uh, formattings. Uh, this you will have, but other than that, uh, it's still what you know. Okay, uh, I'm just confirming Plone CLI now requires python 3 uh, clone cli itself yes so uh, okay. you have to use python 3 uh, or pip in uh, pip 3 install uh, clone cli uh, to install the clone cli but uh, clone cli is uh, is only a wrapper around uh, bob templates clone and bob templates clone in the current version 5.2 uh, uh, still supports uh, Python uh, 2.7 and uh, is also mainly usable uh, down to Plone 4. Uh, the only things which are not uh, very usable are the seeming uh, templates for Plone 4. Um, all others should work, at least they are, they are tested on, on Travis. Um, uh, the seeming templates don't make much sense because uh, the main benefit they give you is relies on on uh, Bassoneta and the backend XML and, and stuff like that. You could use it if you still want to create a diazo seam. Uh, it's it's not impossible, um, but other than that, uh, it's uh, it's like that. We will probably give up uh, the downward compatibility for uh, Bob Templates clone soon, uh, so we will make make a rebranch, a new version. Uh, and uh, this version will then only be uh, Plone 6 and Python 3 uh, to get rid of uh, a lot of uh, uh, code. And also the seeming templates, for example, they don't make sense uh, anymore if we um, bring them out. But you still can use the then the now the current version, um, which is uh, uh, which has got some some updates, and uh, you can uh, use that instead. Okay. I think I'm not seeing any other questions. So once again, thank you very much, Mike, for your presentation. Thank you. And it, it gives us some context as to how to move forward with theming. This has been a really great track one on theming <laughs> and user experience for Plone. Yeah, and please, uh, everybody, uh, jump on board and, and help. Uh, we are just a a few people are working uh, working a lot uh, so every help even the smallest one is really appreciated so okay